Okay, creating the basic thumbnail for a beauty video. Okay, how are you guys? I hope that you've had such a good, well, I was gonna say a good week. I feel like it hasn't been that long since we've talked last because we've had two videos this week. I hope that you guys have had a good one. And um, today I thought that we would talk all things fall beauty as we do as the seasons change. You know, I always like to kind of update things that might be, you know, things that I'm adding in, things that are important, you know, as the weather is changing. And it's not just about the basic, I feel like I say this every single fall when we talk about this or fall and winter. It's not about the basic darker lips, darker colors, the chestnut, like warm eye, the burgundies, basic, basic, ba like it's just, we know, we know the fall trends, but I think even more important than that, like, you know, you do naturally want to maybe wear some deeper colors or to change it up a little, but it's more so about like what the weather is doing, um, how your skin's going to react to certain products. And I, same philosophy I've had forever on here, but and especially as I've kind of, as we've kind of like grown together, learned more about beauty, more about shopping, what's smart, what's not, uh, I think it's good to my, to add these things in, but you shouldn't have to be completely revamping your look. I don't want to look like a different person than I did in the summer, you know, like I think with makeup, you know, as we've seen with different trends just over the decades, like certain makeup trends can make you look like a completely different person. So I'm not trying to like go from summer to fall and change the whole thing. Uh, you still don't look like yourself, but add in some different products. I, I think that I, um, I don't know, you guys have got some really great things to share and some updates on a few things as well. Um, that I've purchased some some game-changing beauty items that people don't talk about enough involving facial hair we will get there ha huh, just got so much stuff I literally brought everything in in a laundry basket and also you guys I'm really excited again um, about the LTK awards and about the whole nomination and you guys have been so sweet and supportive and I really want to kind of share this because it is something I'm, I'm proud of it's through a company that that I love that I've been a part of since the beginning and I feel like it's something that is really based on like performance and something cool to see, you know, like an OG like, or an, a, a YouTuber like me or someone that's, again, you see a lot of the same people promoted for certain things or just a lot of the same. And I just really love, um, I don't know, I, I think it's cool. Not because I'm a part, but I just think what a cool thing for like OG YouTubers. I don't know. So if you'd like to support, um, you can head to my LTK, which is at Makeup by Tiffany D. I have like years of images and you guys know there's a little search feature. If you're ever like, I need a link to this or what's that thing that she has in her house or let me just see all the links of things that she's linked to in her house. You can search. You can search your posts and okay, whatever. So it's pretty cool. Anyways, to vote, you go to my LTK page at Makeup by Tiffany D. And I mean, whatever, you just tap an image just like you would. I don't know. And then like what's cool is under the image, you have all of the products. Of course, if you use the LTK app, that's how you shop the things, you know? But just like or favorite five of those items by tapping the little heart. So every time you favorite five of those products below a picture, it counts as one vote. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and thank you for all the support there. So let's get into it, you guys. I'll link what I'm wearing, you guys. This sweatshirt, I feel like I live in it all the time. I feel like anytime you see me like this last week, I've been wearing this and I do have two of these. I love it. I'll put my sizing and everything. I have a smaller one and I have a larger, more oversized one. This is the medium large, uh, which is more oversized, but it's the most buttery, soft, just perfect sweatshirt and um, highly recommend. Um, I also got a few just because, you know, I can't resist at the beginning. We're going to dive into so many beauty products, but these just came. Bobble Bar sent me some really cute earrings. Now's the time to grab these types of things so that you'll be ready for October. I was so tempted to wear these today. And I'm like, Tiffany, it is September 1st, okay? Relax. But how cute are those? But still, it's the time to get these types of things. Some little pumpkins, little witch hats. Okay, I know you guys are into that. I just wanted to kind of share. And um, let's, let's just do it. Okay, so did we talk about this in a video or was it... Gosh, where did I talk about this? Anyways, I ended up getting the Kim 
beats and someone was like, how did, how are those? I'm going to say like, obviously everyone is different. I can't really wear these. Um, they are, f I don't want to say they're for large ears. They won't, they don't go, I have the world's tiniest ears. Man, I will shove it. This is as far as it goes. And, and they fall out and they hurt. They're just very large, but they sound good. If you're listening like a show or something that has like a lot of like spatial, if you're listening to a lot of podcasts as I do, the Apple earbuds, AirPods, whatever they are, provide a better sound for like maybe one direction. Is that the right thing to say? Or even if you have really quality audio, these, no matter, it sounds like someone's spitting in your ear, okay? I don't know, but, but great for, for TV, for like really like good music. These are great, they sound great. I just wish um, they would make them smaller. Okay, so now let's get into the beauty stuff, right? I am trying to figure out how exactly I'm gonna like, uh, I'm gonna kind of paste this because I've got things from a lot of different categories. I've got facial hair, I've got skincare, beauty, uh, makeup, I mean. Let me just go ahead and get into the makeup. What I'm wearing on my lips today is so nice. First of all, we see again, like I said, you go into the fall and it's more so like really heavy lipsticks, matte lip but as the weather's drier, those aren't the things I really want on my lips. So you have to find things that are, that are good, that have like a good formula. But I, I kind of like the look of like a stain. If I am going to darken it up a bit and go beyond just like a basic lip gloss or a, you know, just like a lip balm or something. I like a little bit of color, but I want to be able to like see the texture of my lips. I don't want to look like it's just goop. Do you know what I mean? Um, these are very comfortable. They feel like you're not wearing anything. They come in a lot of different colors, but they're kind of like a, um, like a stain vibe. You know what I mean? Like definite color. And while there's so many different colors to choose from, and a lot of times I find that with certain products like this, they all end up looking the same. They just look like pink lips or, you know, they, no matter what the color is, they just all look basic and the same and unflattering. These actually do, uh, read what colors they are, but they're more of like a, um, like a, like a stain effect, but comfortable. And I really like that. So they are the Laura Mercier Petal Soft Lipstick Crayon. And that's what they feel like. They do. It feels like a soft, kind of satiny feel. Not too goopy, you know, not too like shiny, summery, poppy, sparkly lips or anything. Uh, but do you know what I'm saying? They kind of have that vibe for fall. Um, but really great colors, and the color I'm wearing today is Ella. And do you remember that color that Clinique made called, and I, I wish I, I need another one of these because I used to have one of these at all times. I remember in high school, this was like, I would pull, it was like the one nice makeup thing I had, I would pull it out and be like, yes. What was it called, Blackberry? Or it was, you know, it was that Clinique Slim lipstick that looked black, but when you put it on, it was just the most beautiful stain that is very, you know, very similar to this, but they do come in, you know, lighter colors and more pinks and more purpley color. I don't know. You know what I mean? More browns, but um, beautiful, a beautiful product. So now this is an eyeshadow palette that I've talked about. Oh my gosh. I talked about this a long time ago, but I am really back into this. Can I see the colors a little better? Uh, mostly mattes, a couple of um, shimmery colors, but I can use all of them. They're really great, which is to me such a good part of a palette. I, I don't, you know, I've gotten them all over the years. I'm not so much of a let's just get every single palette to have something to throw up on my channel to talk about all the time. Um, because eyeshadow palettes for me, it's nice to have one, but you don't need a ton of them because the colors are going to end up going, oh, I didn't know he was back there. The colors are going to end up going to waste. And, um, you know, just certain ones that you just find yourself not using, this is a good one. I've, I tend to like more of like a six color or something like that. So it's the Warm Nude Necessary Eye Palette. Uh, beautiful colors. What else is cute? Grace Cocoon 1979. Hunter. Very cute. Okay. But I like this brand. It's a clean beauty brand. Maybe last year I did the video where I think I had bought a lot of this stuff. And I liked the mascara, I remember. Uh, but it is a very cool brand. And I, I'm really into this color now. Or this palette. And it's what I'm wearing today. 
And it's interesting because all fall and spring, pretty much, I didn't really wear a lot of eyeshadow. I kind of bought this and really loved it. And then got out of it. Um, I was mainly wearing this, which I still would 100% recommend. So these are really my, I wasn't my only two, but this is like what I would recommend as far as eyeshadow goes. I mean, you don't need a whole ton of, of things. Um, we're just going to keep it real. But the Rowan Gold Lust Eye Palette, I talked about this a ton several months back, and it's just this beautiful quad that you literally just use your fingers to apply, and they're cream shadows that stay put. I love these just for like travel. You can put them on, you don't need a base under them, but very pretty. And I wore that a lot, um, like I said, in the warmer months. But, you know, as your skin and goes through, you know, the weather changes in the fall, the winter getting colder, cooler, drier, it does make sense to use more cream products, but then we tend to use them more, or I tend to use them more. I, yeah, in general, people seem to use those products more, the cream products more, like in the spring and the summer. Um, I really have gotten into so many cream products that I have just, you know, gotten into my everyday routine that I don't really look at as, as a seasonal thing. But I am surprised that more so in the fall you see people and even myself going more toward, okay, I'm ready for the heavier, you know, eyeshadows or the whatever, and I'm using more powder. It's just strange. I don't know. I'm not strange, but either or, but it's just whatever I'm drawn to. And I have really been drawn to these lately. And I have really enjoyed these eyeshadows. They're just easy. And again, I don't like ones that require a lot of work or tugging or heavy blending or all of that. Those are so nice. Um, they blend really well and smooth and they, they last beautifully. Um, I've been using this. So when I get ready to do my eyeshadow, of course, like an eyeshadow base is always a good idea. We've talked about all of them over the years, but I just, you know, have gotten more into simple things and not using, and I've been like this for years, even with skin primers. I don't like all of the fuss and all of the nonsense. I think that you can be savvy and use what works without putting four different layers of a different product to different product. That's generally just wiping off whatever you put on before, okay? We've, we've discussed. And I'm like that with eyeshadows too. I'm like, can I get away with just like tapping on a cream shadow, nothing else? Yeah, you can, okay? You'll be fine. Um, sometimes when I do wear more powders, you know, I do want to put something under it so it doesn't crease. Um, or just, just so it stays fresher. And I really do like this. It's the Trish McAvoy Eye Base Essentials. We've talked about that so much. I use this one a ton over the years, but it's nice. It kind of color corrects. Just a few little dots, tap it, and then you're ready for your eyeshadow. And um, something, I'm going to talk about these brushes, but something that really is essential to me as far as like my eye area and something that I have used so long term. Again, people talk about so many things all the time. This is great. This is great. This is great. That is great. Um, you don't know what it's, if it's is it really going to help you out years from now? How long? I mean, it's not, and it's not always, you know, realistic to expect to see someone to be able to review something after several years. Um, we do that a lot here because I've been here forever and it's like, whatever. It's like, let me review this bag. I've had it for 10 years. Let me review this product. That, And you've seen me talk about it over the years, but I do think this is something that has truly changed my, like from anti-aging to just how my eyes look. Um, it's the Pericone MD Eyelid Lift Serum. I've gone through countless ones of these. And this is probably my first really expensive um, like ongoing skincare purchase and you know I've got so many people using this and my family my grandma loves this and this is something that I think is essential just for anti-aging and all the time but get into this this fall okay because it's gonna really help with just how your makeup goes on with this area here that I don't that no one seems to address okay um, and there's not many products that do because most eye creams in a jar are not made to be used. Oh my gosh, what's it called? Not the orbital. I mean, that is your orbital bone, but they'll say like, you know, under only. Like you just don't realize that half of the creams, half of the eye creams, ones that you're probably using are meant to be used only below, not above. Because if they track into your eyes, they can cause some really gnarly things. And um, usually in the instructions, all, all the time, and all the instructions of eye creams that will say if it's safe to use up there. So for me, even I remember in high school and college, I would get so flaky right here, dry, flaky right there. And I would get those little like white milia bumps if I ever tried to put something there to help it. 
and that's an area that tends to sag first when you start aging. I have very exposed eyelids um, and a lot of space there. And that's something, you know, when you have eyes like mine, that's that's something that loses its it loses its grip. You know what I mean? It'll start, people get eye lifts, ten, you know, you don't do you see what I'm saying? That's kind of the area. Now let me tell you, this is magic, okay? It's designed to target that area. It kind of has a little jobber. I just dab it, you know, every every single morning and night without fail. And your your makeup goes on beautifully over it because it's not greasy. You can even use this as a serum below your eyes. Now, I usually use a thicker eye cream, but if you're like, I'm just going to invest in this, use this above your eyes, use it as your eye cream, and then just put your moisturizer over and you'll be great. But I'm telling you, oh my gosh, such a great thing. And I do notice that area is always so much drier during the winter, and especially when I use more powdery products. So get into that. And as far as eye brushes, these are the ones that I've been using lately, and I'm just kind of inspired to talk about these because I have been using more eyeshadow, which I've not been using in a very long time. This is just the number one. If you're going to buy one eyeshadow brush, it's the Sigma E35, my all-time favorite. From all over color to blending, crease, everything. I really love this, too. And again, this is unlike anything. Like, eyeshadow brushes, you know, I mean, every brand I feel is a copycat of another, of another, of another. All brands are inspired by all brands, but the brush lines are all like every brand makes the same flipping brush, you know, and I like it when something's different. And you may think this isn't that like different, but it is. I've just never found one that's as good as that. And then this, again, I like it for the same reason. It is unique. It's the uh, Sephora Pro Shadow 10. And what I do before, like, you know, I tap on my um, the Trish McAvoy eye primer, and then I will use this, the lightest matte color or this middle color, and tap it on, and then just a quick sweep. It's the perfect size and shape to just go right over, I don't know, just for the whole eyelid. And then I'll, you know, go in with the crease one, and then I'll put this on the, I don't care, you get it. And then for something more um, precise, the MAC 217 was the original one that I ever saw like this. Of course, many brands have made them, but... I have really been into this one. It's the Trish McAvoy, the 3D Eye Blending. And something about this one, it's that same little tapered vibe, but it's just the size of it. It's the amount of brushes, brushes, the amount of fiber. It's just a good one. Really love that. I love Trish McAvoy brushes, that face brush. Oh my gosh, the wet dry brush, nothing better. Foundations are also like a big question. Of course, it's like one of the biggest parts of your, your makeup. And I don't really like to change it around a lot, I think. For me, I have pretty... Um, Combination skin, but where it gets oily, it gets very oily and very breakout prone. This is such a great foundation. Um, I'm actually at the last little bits of it. I've been like unscrewing it and pouring out the last bits. I use shade 4.5. It's the Armani uh, Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation. It's oil free. It doesn't have any pore clogging ingredients. And it's just like magic. It has the perfect amount of coverage. It never oxidizes. So many shades of I mean, just the shade range is incredible, but it's perfect for summertime. It feels light. Um, it's not too dewy. It's not too matte, okay? It's just skin. It looks natural. It has the perfect finish. But then I love it because moving into the colder weather, it doesn't dry me out. I do get very prone to dry skin, and even like in the areas where I'm oily, it'll break up. It'll look like garbage if my skin isn't happy or if it's not, you know, um, like well moisturized and if I use things that are too drying, it just is a recipe for disaster. But this is beautiful for the cooler months when your skin might be a little drier. So don't feel like you have to mess around to get a million different things. Or now I need to use something really moisturizing. Just use that. I mean, it's so good. And then um, the concealer. I mean, nothing better. Again, it's just the most perfect, like, year-round all the time. Now, this is a new product. Colleen is doing, Colleen Rothschild's doing the Labor Day sale right now, so everything's 20% off. So if you want to grab something, it's the time to do it. This is a new product. It's the Matcha Tea Hydrating Balm. Matcha Tea Hydrating. What is it, Matcha? I think everyone needs, and you don't even know you need it. It's probably a product type that you have never used before. It's kind of odd or unusual to find something truly new. And I've used a product in years past. It's like a, wait, let's story. It's like a balm for touching up your under eye area. You guys, this is everything. Okay, so listen. I um, I always say like, you know, during the day, 
you're tempted, you know, oh, I want to touch up. Let me pull out the powder. Let me put more on. Or look at what's making me look a little mm, tired or whatever, like what my under eye looks like. Usually I find if I just take my fingers and just smooth it out or if I just even get it off, like it just looks better, right? Nothing's worse than crepey dry makeup or creased makeup or just, and it happens as the day goes on. This is such a game-changing product, you guys, and just the epitome of like fall beauty, okay? So this is new. It's the Colleen Rothschild Matcha Tea Hydrating Balm. This is something that you don't even know that you need, but it will be a game changer in how your makeup looks, how your face looks, your whole touch-up vibe throughout the day. Now, I've said for years that people <clears throat> tend to kind of get it a little, I don't say get it wrong or get it backwards, but it's kind of counterproductive unless if you're like on a set or on TV and they're just piling you on with powder. But in day-to-day -day life, when you're just out and about, when you want to look refreshed, that's not the vibe. People think usually, okay, I want to touch up. Let me put on more powder. Let me... You know, let me dry out. So, a lot of times, it's because you're looking a little creased, your makeup's settling. If you put some moisture over that, if you kind of dab it out, make it look like skin, like something fresh, that is usually a balm is what's going to help that. I know that sounds nuts. For years, I had used a product that was like an eye thing like that. This is for your entire face. It is so hydrating. You can use it alone. You can use it over makeup. I just think it's amazing. I keep it in my purse. And during the day, like if I notice I'm getting a little like, mm, you know, just put a little, few little dabs and then you tap it under your eyes. And I'm not kidding, you guys. You might think, what? That's going to wipe off your makeup. I'm telling you, game change or you'll look 10 years younger. Like I know it's nuts to say, but there's something to it. I like to use it around my nose. You can use it around your mouth. Anywhere where you are looking a little, you know. And I like it because it's such... A quality product it's not just some like random like cosmetic balm it actually has like good skin loving ingredients it's not greasy it doesn't have a scent like a doesn't have a scent at all heavy scent I don't, I don't smell anything but I just I think it's really cool and I think it's such a beautiful amazing product you can even put it on your lips um, I put it on my neck the other I get very dry right here and I'm not saying like rub it all over your makeup it's a recipe for disaster okay I'm saying yeah you can dab it a little dab it on your fingers and just as you would do to touch up with a powder puff or whatever, try it. It's going to change your makeup game. And um, just, I mean, obviously this is a good product. I'm saying, yeah, this is a game changer. But that whole mentality of touching up makeup like that will change everything. And speaking of Colleen, um, if you do order right now during the Labor Day sale, everything's 20% off. I, okay. I love a face oil. I'm very breakout prone. I have to be so careful. I will link to that website where I literally put in the ingredients of everything that I ever use. It has a pore clogging ingredient. I don't use it. Uh, but you might think, oh, an oil is scary. That used to be me. Not all oils are created the same. Not all of them will wreck your skin. My skin is so clear and of course, I get the occasional like hormonal zit, like acne, whatever, like little things here and there. I have not in a while. And I think it's, well, there's a few things that I've kind of changed in my diet that I think has helped. Not as many eggs or, I don't know, it's just a whole thing, you guys. Just, it's, it's a mess. Um, that's been helping. But I'm very prone to those little clogged pores. That's from, usually products will bring that out. Of course, it's like my makeup of my skin and, you know, oil production or whatever. But if I keep my skin really hydrated, moisturized, I don't get oily because my skin isn't pumping oil to overcompensate from being sucked dry by products that are supposed to keep it matte or control the oil or control the acne, like no. So I find that if I use an oil, like as a moisturizer in the morning or at night, and you can even layer something over it if you wanna even put more moisture on. But the face oil number nine, nothing compares. It's everything that you need. I put it on my neck, I put it on my face, everywhere, okay? Morning and night. Now I was using a different oil in the morning. I recently ran out and I thought, I'm just gonna keep using this. This one is fairly new. I have another one ready to go. I just love that product and I think for fall um, nothing better than just supple well hydrated skin because then of course we're gonna be getting into even colder times um creams I mean I mentioned you know the cream products this is great I mean we talk about cream blushes and oh but look at this new shade look at that it's fun to try new shades and everything because this is just such a perfect universal amazing product it's the Bobbi Brown pot rouge for lips and cheeks you can even touch it and put a little on your lips as I showed you guys that I do a lot pale pink. Now, um, yeah, it is, I think, a universally flattering color. It's not just such a hot pink that's like, oh, that's like doll cheeks, or that's going to look very bright and light, or that's going to read this or that. It honestly is, um, 
has like a berry undertone. So beautiful for fall. I wear this year round, but it's such a beautiful, easy product. You can use your fingers, you can use a brush. And I have been, I've been so obsessed with that. Okay, we're getting, we're getting, we're getting near to the end. Okay, body stuff. I do have a few more like facial things in a second, but let me just get these. Okay, Kapari products. I love for your body. Scents, nothing better. I really love this line. I was really drawn to it because I just like the color and everything. Um, but the Tahitian Vanilla Ultra Ultra Restore Body Butter and the Hydrating Body Milk. So I really got into this first. Such a good yummy scent. It smells like just just real coconut, yummy, something I could eat. I just really love it. It has hyaluronic acid, all kinds of good ingredients. So great to take care of your skin year round. But of course, it's going to get a little... It's a little drier in the, in the cool weather, obviously, but get you a good body butter. I really do like this one. I also really love the Tahitian Manoy or the um, Vanilla by Colleen. So if you do order one of those, you might want to try one of those too. But I love this scent. But I'm going to say, for the body butter, try Colleen's. It's great. But between these two, I thought, okay, the body milk's probably a much lighter product. It's, you know, not going to really, not, I mean, it'll do the job, but... Um, I don't know, like I'm usually more like just a body butter, like full on person. This, I don't know. Like I feel like it might even feel a little silkier. It's easier to rub in, has the same like benefits, the yummy scent. Your skin has like this beautiful like glowy sheen. And I would say between those two, they're wonderful. I would definitely recommend the body butter. Again, it's hard to pick between that and the Colleen. I just really love the Colleen scents. Um, but... This is what you want. I think you'll really, really like this because sometimes I don't want to sit there. Body butters take a little more time to rub in, just to be honest. Um, I do kind of like the ease of this. And it gives you, you know, coconut oil, shea butter, chamomile, and the ingredients in Kapari products are really, really nice. And I love that packaging and I, I really do like the product. Okay. Um, oh, I've had these sitting here. And speaking of foundation, you know, I talked about the brush, the Trish McAvoy Wet Dry Brush, which I should have brought down here. Um, it's a wonderful foundation brush. Even, I've, I've said, I probably did a video eight years ago talking about, like, foundation brushes, like a Sigma one that I loved. And I said, always dampen it, just like you would a beauty blender. You may think, what, I'm going to wet a foundation brush? Yes, before you put your foundation on it, dampen it a little, blot it off into, I think, we know this tip, okay? It won't absorb as much of your foundation. Your foundation will go on better and actually, like, less streaky. And a lot of times when you use a brush, the foundation ends up going on um, heavier and a little drier looking. And you may not even notice that if that's what you use every day. But when you start using, like, a beauty blender type of product, uh, it really is a game changer as far as how your foundation looks and how it melts onto your skin. Just even just the dewiness and just the comfort of how my skin feels during the day it's just never quite the same unless if I use like a beauty blender. And we've had very deep conversations for the last decade plus about beauty blenders through the whole life of the beauty blender. I've gotten them from the, I've, I just, I've done all kinds of things with the beauty blender, okay? Love it, obviously, but they got very inconsistent. And then I was buying the beaky sponges, like the big bulk pack from Amazon for like, you get like 10 for $8. Loved those, but maybe one or two out of the kit was a little. But I thought, whatever, it's cheap. I can justify that. Well, then um, someone told me about these. Now, the black ones are another brand. Ooh, what was that? Something else on Amazon. I liked, I didn't like them as much as these. Okay, so the pink ones. You guys are going to know. They're, pop, they're called pawpaw sponges. Then, as I was going down my dark hole of Amazon, and I was, you know, biggie sponges. Oh, well, then this one's recommended. Let me try that. Well, then I, I kept seeing these, the pop, pop off sponges. Uh, okay. Game changer. Okay, I will never use anything else. I know that sounds nuts, but these are amazing. Every single one. They're all pink. They're all nice. And again, I don't even feel like I even have to say this, but when you use a, a product like this, a blender, always has to be wet. Wet it, squeeze it. It will get big. It will get very bouncy and large and that's the thing some of the beauty blenders over the years it was almost like the material was different like but then you'd buy one a couple months later and it'd be just like the old ones it's like they're just all very different not even by color not even by it's just odd like they wouldn't grow as much or they'd have that kind of rough sponge feeling they didn't have that bounciness these even when they're dry have that velvety bounciness but nothing better and you know for I mean blending everything from the eye concealer eye concealer I cannot even if I'm going to use a foundation brush for my foundation, like for my face, I always still have to use a dampened blender like this for my under eye. Always. Okay? 
always like your under eye will look younger it will look smoother less likely to creasing and creping because it's not like piled in there and it's just a smoother more airbrushed finished finished finish okay um what else you got okay a few more things so my fall scent and I was like well if I had to pick like a fall scent what would it be and honestly truly it would be this so the last several years I've been wearing this the uh Rouge 540 the Baccarat Rouge 540 I began wearing this I believe the season right before COVID this does kind of remind me of like that time <sighs> this shall not be mentioned no, I'm kidding like quarantine all that. I don't, it does it does give me that vibe of just being around the house wearing this and like dressing up with nowhere to go um but I've worn this so much over the last couple years. I've gone through a few of them and nothing better. And I do use the one. I don't, I don't want to say I don't like. I like the one that's the Eau de Parfum. I don't really like the one as much that's the extract that's much more expensive. This one is expensive, but it is a perfume unlike anything else. Um, a few more things. Uh, before we get into the rest, I'm just, I was going through and I'm like, you know, this isn't just like a anything and everything favorites. I mean, and it's kind of getting that way, right? Like I'm talking about a lot of stuff, but all of it kind of has a tie to like the season or fall or whatever. And as I was in my bathroom, I was like rounding up things. I was like, okay, well, this is something that nobody talks about. Very few people talk about it. And I'm just like, ladies, okay, people, men, women, everyone. Men have these nose trimmers, okay? let's not lie. We have facial hair. Okay. We're taking care of it. We're doing something. Okay. Something that people really, really, really neglect. Okay. Are their nose hair, nose hairs, nose hair situations. Now take a good, I don't want to say go pick yourself apart, but you need to take a good hard look at your straight up the nose. Okay. Or not even, but just like how often do you really look at yourself? Like someone's going to be up close to you at some point and they're going to see like, you need to get a magnifying mirror and be like, if I were this close, I'm turn to the side. Could I see? All that? Yes, you can. I can. I mean, sometimes there's something I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm watching my, one of my old dudes. I'm like, oh my gosh, can I see my nose? Let me tell you. For years, I've used one of those little just like flippy things. You know, it's just like one of those little face things. It's just like one of those little blades. It's just like an electric little shaver, you know, that you get like for peach fuzz or whatever. And I'll just kind of do that. But my point is, it's like something has happened. Like... What are we doing for nose hair? Are we just not talking about it? I'm gonna talk about it because this is what I do. Men have these kits that are like targeted for men, you know, that are like, you know, the ear trimmers. And oh my God, thank God that's not an issue. God, am I gonna have to worry about ear hair as they get older? I mean, we all know men do, but I'm just saying maybe that's one thing they, <laughs> at least we don't have to deal with that yet. Uh, I've had, I've had nose hair like my whole life. Everyone has, like I, I look at people all the time, I'm like, you don't know, you have nose hair. It's not that I'm picking apart people, but I'm saying you've done all this to the rest of your face. You've shaved every inch of your body, but you got nose hair? Ladies, let's try, okay? And I'm not judging saying how dare you because fully, I'm saying let's do something about it. These are so cheap. They sell, this is literally, it was called like a woman's nose hair. It's like a con air one. It's, Cause it's white, it has pink writing, but it is cute. I mean, it's not bad, but get you one of these. It sounds terrifying. And you just stick it up there and you just go to town. And I'll be honest, it's very satisfying. Nothing is more satisfying. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Do you ever think you'd see me like sticking something up my nose in a video? Don't answer that. Um, it's satisfying. And then you... Take a little, I don't look like I'm picking my nose, but you have to take a tissue afterwards and just kind of, you know, give it a little wipe. And because sometimes like the little hairs, but I'm not kidding you. Took two seconds and it's a game changer and you just feel better. And I'm, and you, you have confidence. You know what I mean? Get up close to people. Stick that straight up your nose. Stick those nose hair trimmers straight up your nose. Um, okay. This is something that I'm so excited. That I have been on a wild ride with my whole pre prebiotic, probiotic thing. I talked about this a couple years ago when I first started drinking my smoothie every morning, which I have not skipped. I put a greens powder in, collagen, um, you know, just basic stuff. Okay, I don't want to get on into that. I have a video making that. But, you know, I really started taking supplements every morning too. The Ritual Multivitamin for Women game changer. I've taken that every day. Okay. I love the ritual. It just comes to my doorstep. It's easy peasy. I need to do a video about like 
Maybe we'll do one on like subscriptions and things that I have. I'll just go through all my things that come every month because I think that's kind of interesting and shameful. We'll do that, okay? Um, okay. Something that was a game changer as far as like bloating and stuff. Taking a pre-probiotic, probiotic, whatever. That did more for my stomach, for my bloating, just for like the overall like look of my body than anything. It makes me feel good. I don't have... I used to have this most sensitive stomach where like I'd eat things and I'd immediately like, you know what I'm saying? Every, like things would just hit my stomach. And I don't know, maybe this is helping, maybe taking the probiotics, prebiotics, whatever helps. Um, but finding good ones is the trick because they're not all created equal. And for years, the very first ones that I really loved were the ones by Monate that I took with my same like, you know, my powders and stuff. And it became impossible to find. It was a pre-probiotic that was suspended in a liquid in a oil so that when it hit your stomach it was like a dual layer capsule and it was I, I could tell the biggest difference okay and then it sold out. I'm like what the hell am I gonna do? So I found one on Amazon that was good and I thought oh this isn't bad well then the price went through the roof and sometimes I would notice you know later on I thought is this this doing it is something else like sometimes I would get like stomach cramps. I don't know you do have to be you have to find the one that works for you. I still was like, oh, I want the Mon 8 ones. I would like, just can anyone like smuggle me some of these? Like I need these. Um, and they were just always out of stock. And then Ritual like answered my prayers and they made, they made one too. So now it comes every month with my thing. It's the Ritual prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic, which I never heard of postbiotic, but it's the same. Their stuff smells good because they put the, there's a little tab in all of their products and it's coated in um, peppermint oil. So all of your stuff smells like that, and okay, whatever. Anyways, the capsules are exactly like the Mon 8 ones. They're um, suspended in like the gel or the oil, so like it doesn't just, it, it's like a time thing, a time release, I don't know. Or it just doesn't hit your stomach immediately and it's like, ah. Um, so I have really been loving these as my second bottle, my second month doing those. And then of course, like Mon 8 had theirs back in stock and I'm like, nope, I'm doing these from now on. It's easy. And I love those. Okay. Next, let's, okay, a few more things, you guys. I, oh, I have this too. Oh, I have a few things. Okay. These, these I brought in for my bed. Uh, just a nighttime lip balm. Take care of your lips all the time, but especially in the winter, you know, with the heat going and the drier air. This one I really like. It's the Lawless Forget the Filler Overnight Lip Plumping Mask, which is odd for, like, a nighttime product to be plumping, but it's it's comfortable. It's really nice. You wake up and your lips look really good, but this is something that I use all the time, too. Some mornings I'll use it, and it is just such a good moisturizing lip product that actually gives you a little plumping effect, too. In like a non-irritating way. Get you a good hand cream. I last time I checked, this was out of stock. I've gone through countless ones of these over the years. It's the Colleen Roth Child Restorative Hand Cream. It actually like addresses age spots and anti-aging on your hands. I've always, you know, big tip when you're using your face oil and doing everything. I've done this for as long as I can remember, and it's just out of habit. When I put on my cream, my face, anything, eye cream, always just have it rub the last bit on the tops of your hands. And I feel like you know, for my age, which is so silly. I still truly, like, identify as a, in my head, like, as a 26-year-old. Um, I'm full-on, like, 30, how old am I, 38? And I feel like my hands look good for my age. 38, I know some people's, why? Well, oh, you're so young, I get it. Well, okay, just listen. We're addressing anti-aging, we're, we're doing it, and I don't know, maybe when, when I turn 40, you guys will be like, okay, now you're old as shit. Okay, now you're old. Now we can talk about it. Um, anytime I ever say like anti-aging or look at your hand, oh, you're a baby. I'm 38. Okay, whatever. It's fine. But I think, what? Okay, this is odd. Let me just hear my hands and this helps. Okay. Um, I do want to, I have a fall candle I want to tell you about. We're going to do a fall home video coming up because it is September and I am craving all of the fall stuff, but I'm, my, my Halloween stuff isn't out. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting a little bit. We'll ease into that. Okay, we'll get there, but I do want to talk about that the last beauty things that you really need to get on board with, okay, are these two products. And I'm not kidding, you guys, the Revital Lash has changed my life. Okay, being dramatic. I could wear absolutely no makeup, and honestly, sometimes I think that my lashes look better with no mascara than they do with. Now, since my channel began and, you know, people, oh, you've had good lashes. Yes, 
but when I was not wearing mascara, you couldn't really see them. But then when you put mascara on, well, then they look good, okay? Whatever. My lashes look like fake lashes with no mascara now. They look like big, thick bundles. Like, I just, I really just, and I can say that. I'm not like brag, oh, look at how great my lashes are. It's because of a product, which I like. I like being able to say, oh, you know, there's actually something that you can do. And it's so funny, whenever you talk to people that use lash serum or people ask me, there's a doctor's office that I go to, they're always like, oh my gosh, like, they freak out over my lashes, and they're like, well, I tried that, and I didn't like it. I'm like, well, I've used mine for like two years, and I didn't notice results until about a month or two in, and then it was just like, boom, 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 curled, thick, long, um, but then I ask people, and they're like, well, I, you know, I didn't use a whole container, or I didn't use it all the time. Maybe do you need to use it all the time, and I'm thinking, yes, so... I get different things work differently for everyone. There's things people love that I despise, things that I love that you despise, and you, things that aren't going to work for people. But I think that if you're going to start um, an, a serum, like a lash serum, you have to be consistent. I haven't noticed anything with my eye color. People always say that. I've used it for, this is going on my third year using this product. I've used it for two complete years, going on my third, and I've never noticed that. One thing I have noticed, which I actually like, and I think kind of, uh, I don't know if this is terrible to say, but kind of helps me feel even better about not wearing makeup is that I do feel like right at my lash line on the actual skin, it may have darkened it. And not like where you look and say, wow, it looks gray or it looks black or not dark like a eyeliner. It just looks like a little more like a darker pigment of my own skin. You'd never notice it. But I notice when I'm up close, but most people would say, oh, well, that's what a natural eyelid looks like. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that, but it's nothing bad, and I actually love it, and I'd be sad if that went away, so. Um, I just can't get enough of that, and that kind of stuff, taking care of your skin, using these skincare products, taking care of what exists on your face, and anti-aging, and your lashes, your brows, without a cosmetic is going to make everything else look better. He's cleaning and, like, licking himself. Can you can't even see his sweet little face. Um... So he's smacking, if you hear him smacking around. We'll, we'll talk about some fall things, but pick up this candle. This is so exciting. Okay, first of all, first Saturday of college football season, I always bust out the leaves candle. Brad looks forward to it every year. He asks, do we have our candles? Like, he loves, it's just something we've done since our very first house. It's before we were married, since our garage apartment. Like, it's just our, like, oh, I just, I love it. And, um, you know, with Bath and Body Works candles, that's a whole thing, okay? The leaves candles are good, and they have a whole bunch of other things, which are nice. But you guys, this is like leaves level candle. Now this I'd never had seen before. It's called Sweet Cinnamon Plum. You guys need to get this. No, it's not cute. I don't really love. You know what? You know what? I'll take it back. No, I think that is pretty cute. I'm gonna put it out and be like, yes. I'm not gonna peel the label on this as I usually do for ones that are a little offensive. This is cute. This is such a good one, you guys. Though, if you guys know of the Nest. Um, candles that come out every holiday. I believe it's just called plum that no one talks about. It's the most beautiful. It's burgundy, a deep plum, like burgundy purple color. Everyone always talks about the nest, like pumpkin candle or the spot, whatever it is. But that one is so good, but it is so hard to find. And this smells just like it, but better. He's drinking water now. He's really like smacking it up. He's getting old. I'm like, I mean, he's fine. He's healthy, but like, Having a senior dog is just so, it's sweet, but like the snoring at night, the grunting, the smacking, the eating sound, and he's a 90 pound dog. So it's, you know, I mean, you're hearing everything, you're smelling everything, you're full, and I just, I love him and he's just sweeter. He's getting sweeter and sweeter. Um, anyways, so I love you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this beauty chit chat and that it inspired you to maybe bust out some new things. Maybe you'll find a few things that you haven't tried. And I know that you guys will love all of these and, um, and they'll be great for fall. Not just like a palette you can use here or there or something that you can use to change up something here, but something that you can truly buy and use every day. These are great things to just like work into your everyday routine. Because you know, we like to do that. We like to talk about the stuff that we're really going to use, really going to make a difference and not just something that you're going to buy you know, to be trendy and use every now and then. So I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you're getting excited for fall. And um, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much. And I will talk to you all very soon. Bye, y'all.